Welcome back into the GSMC Sports Podcast as we move on here to the NHL and the Stanley Cup Finals where we saw the Edmonton Oilers dismantle the Florida Panthers on Saturday night, winning their Game 4 matchup in an astounding 8-1 to game, which leads to some speculation over whether or not we could see a potential comeback. Now, in this game, I think that it's important to consider all of the same factors we talked about during the NBA Finals, where it was just one team, you know, who was holding a 3-0 series lead, you know, deep on the road, even more so than in any other, you know, Stanley Cup Finals or NBA Finals ever, where however many miles it is between Edmonton and Florida, where the Panthers were deep, deep on the road and felt like they were potentially going to be celebrating with a win in this game and it just seemed like the Oilers were playing with far more desperation in this game where they were able to just sort of catch Bobrovsky on an uncharacteristically soft night where it started with the shorthand goal from Matthias Janmark. I believe that's his second of the postseason where we are still seeing this power play for Edmonton really struggle. You could say for the majority of the past two rounds in general, I know that they turned it on a little bit at the end of the Western Conference Finals against the Stars, but for the most part, their power play has been largely ineffective. And at least in this instance, they didn't need that where Yanmark, again, getting out on the break from a pass from Connor Brown, scores a shorthanded goal to at least disrupt what Bobrovsky was sort of cooking over the past couple games. And they just continued to pour it on from there, ended up going into the second period with a 3-1 to one lead. They then once again get on... Bobrovsky again early finally seeing some level of production from the top of their lineup we're headed into this game we had seen zero goals combined from the top five goal scorers of Edmonton through the postseason where Connor McDavid, Leon Dreisaitl, Evan Bouchard, Zach Hyman, Ryan Nugent Hopkins none of them had scored yet uh, goal that is at least McDavid with a number of assists and he just passed Gretzky for I want to say it's the most assists in a single postseason run at like 30 something so that just further goes to show the legacy of McDavid it's not easy to ever break a Gretzky record and that's what McDavid has been able to do from a playmaking standpoint but he also gets finally in the scorers category with the goal that he had early on in the second period and then we saw later in the period as well Ryan Ryan Nugent Hopkins also uh, get on the board but by that point we had already seen Bobrovsky get pulled just five minutes into the second period the front runner for the Con Smythe award he had been pulled out of the game it was interesting I was I was je- literally just before they ended up pulling him. It was a Darnell Nurse goal, and I think that you know I was asking at that point, is it something that makes sense for the Oiler for the Panthers to just kind of wave the white flag and not get Bobrovsky off of his rhythm anymore? And that was ultimately the uh, decision they tried to go with. So they end up pulling him just before the. 15 minute mark in the second period and from that point I mean there was ne- it was never really a competition so it's definitely a feel good win for the Oilers where this is their it was their first uh win in the Stanley Cup finals was 2006 if I'm re- remembering off of the top of my head uh, was the last time that they had a win in the Stanley Cup finals so it was great to see for that organization and for that crowd especially as well because we've talked about how electrifying the Edmonton crowd has been throughout the entirety of this postseason and you know it eventually was getting charged up during the third period of uh, game three but at that point 
the Oilers had already put themselves into some sort of a hole that was just too much to overcome. So ultimately, you know, this was the feel-good game for them. And now, just like in the NBA Finals, we start to talk ourselves into, well, is there anything that the Oilers can look to build on moving forward here? And do they have any chance? Now, Unlike in the NBA and the NHL, we have seen a number of different series uh, come back from 0-3 deficits. I believe four series in the NHL, including the including one in the Stanley Cup Finals as well. Now we're talking 1940s by that point anyways, so we are at a very different point in what the history of the NHL looks like and what the current landscape is and such, but it is something to at least keep in mind there that the Oilers are not necessarily going into this entirely, you know, uncharted area. And what what's going to start for them is they're going to have to try and break Sergei Bobrovsky. And I don't know if that's necessarily possible. Maybe this was the start of that, possibly getting some cracks in the armor there in terms of Bobrovsky and the Panthers and how shut down it's been. You are going to, it feels like, get breakaway opportunities for the against the Florida defense for as smothering as they are, like we saw on the shorthanded goal from Yanmark, it's the these instances where the forecheck is also just so aggressive for Florida in the offensive zone that occasionally you can sort of squeak through. And if you have that good passing from the back line, you are able to generate some types of opportunities. And the majority of the goals allowed by Bobrovsky up to this point have come on the break. So that's something that, again, it's very difficult to try and push the pace against Florida's defense, but it's something that I feel like to some degree as well, you know, you have to try and do. You also look at the way that Florida on the back end of their defense are just so good at getting their sticks to deflect passes and shots and you know one of the best shot blocking teams in the NHL that that's absolutely something that they are going to need to have going for them I thought this was an incredibly impressive performance from Stuart Skinner who again I keep saying I have not been extremely I haven't been a number one believer of him by any means I think that the difference in the goaltending between Bobrovsky and Skinner was the number one reason why I picked the Panthers to win this series but he was incredible in this game and you know there was a chance that this could have felt like a lot more of a game when the uh when the Panthers got a two-on-one breakaway and Stuart Skinner made that save going from his right to his left going up and making the glove save something that we have seen him struggle with up to this point in the postseason that was sort of a really defining moment for him of this is our game we are going to take this energize the crowd and ultimately you know it set the tone for the rest of the game. Oilers went on. They did end up scoring on the power play finally. I believe it was their first time in the entirety of this final series where the Panthers were going on a stretch of killing 45 of 47. I believe that was coming into this game. That might have been after the first penalty kill. Um, but, you know... We had seen this Panthers penalty kill on an absolute heater, and finally the Oilers were able to break through. Now again, at this point, not even against Bobrovsky, so they're going to feel like that they can come back composed. And ultimately, you know, I thought that despite the fact that this was obviously a very ugly game, if you're looking for any sort of a silver lining, if you're a Panthers fan, other than the fact that your team is up 3 nothing, it's the fact that they this was obviously a very ugly game on the ice from a performance standpoint but the Panthers didn't necessarily unravel at the first opportunity you saw Bobrovsky come out he was seemed very composed still necessarily 
um, in the third period where the Oilers were pouring it on them. They were still able to, again, keep their composure. We've seen a lot of cheap hits uh, throughout this series, especially with some of these knee-to-knee -knee contact um, instances throughout the uh, at least the first three games and the Panthers just again were able to remain calm let this game just sort of pass them by and they feel like they are going to have a golden opportunity to win this thing at home I believe game five takes place tomorrow night so Panthers are favored in that one minus 135 according to ESPN bet as things currently stand so it's hard to again overreact if you're a Panthers fan an extremely ugly game very possibly the worst of the Panthers whole season but they were able to put themselves in this opportunity of having a little bit more leeway now you had those sort of moments of thinking oh well are we going to be celebrating partying tonight for winning this championship? The first in Florida Panthers history for that note. So obviously they know the pressure that's sort of on the line there. But ultimately, you know, they they had that moment. They came up short. Now is the time to sort of refocus your energy. Make sure that you aren't going into this offseason with regrets. We've talked at length before about how the Panthers feel like this is all about their unfinished business so that's where their mind currently is and I I personally you know I'm not going to sway off of the picking the Panthers now is, am I going to say it's definitively over I probably don't have the same level of confidence in that as I do with the Celtics being up against the Mavericks but the the Panthers are the better team in my eyes and they just need to close it out in one of these games we've seen Bobrovsky in the Eastern Conference Finals be able to stand on his head and put the team on his back so I anticipate that that's how this is going to play out but if you think that the Oilers are going to make a comeback definitely let us know why in the comment section but we're going to be taking our next break here and when we come back on the other side we're going to be getting into some more MLB action from a couple of the top storylines over the weekend starting with the injuries to both uh, two star players for the Los Angeles Dodgers and how that will impact their season moving forward. So stick with us and we will get into all of that after this quick break. <laughs> 